I think every hunter who has access to land or private land or at least land that you have permission to maybe manipulate a little bit or make better, I think all of us that have that opportunity have the desire to make it the best it can be. And I will say from my personal experience and circumstances, we've had a 40 acre property in my family since I was a kid that has always been owned by us, that has always been ours to do with what we want. We've also been very fortunate over the years to have lots of places with permission that we've been able to hunt on too, which is extremely fortunate and, and blessed opportunity. So the place that I'm hunting right now is on our land. There's about a one to two acre area up here with timber combined with some food plots and things like that that we've put in with a hay field just to the south of it. For the first several years that I hunted, I never came up and hunted in this spot. It simply, you just didn't see a lot of deer. You didn't see a lot of deer activity. You didn't see a lot of deer sign. It may have been one of those places they inhabited nocturnally, but during the daylight, you just rarely saw deer. It just wasn't set up well for deer habitat and to see a lot of deer. And I think that from the time that I started hunting until we started to clean this place up and make it into a really good hunting spot, I believe I killed one deer on this place in about 10 years. My dad had killed some deer on it, but not a lot. And our, our preference was typically to go somewhere else that we had permission nearby as opposed to coming here. So as the years went by, places that we had permission in the past and for years, they began to change ownership. So we would lose permission, things like that. And my dad and I looked at each other and said, this is the place that we have that's ours. We might as well make it the best that it can be. And from that point forward, we got to work on just an idea of let's clear out this area here of all these brambles and trees and briars and bushes and stuff that's just not useful for deer habitat. Let's clear that out. And you look at the whole picture and it seems so overwhelming to the point that we would take weed eaters and metal blades on them and we would just say, I'm just going to focus on this five foot by five foot area, get that area knocked out, move on to the next five foot by five foot area, just taking little bites at a time to get it cleared out to make it better. From there, putting in a couple mineral licks. After we were able to get it cleared out, we were able to burn a lot of the brush, get rid of that, cut down any trees that weren't helping anything, maybe were simply not useful, getting those burnt, getting it cleared out to where you could actually then walk through the timber. We did leave one area kind of over to my right, right here, that we would call bedding or cover area. And then to the north of this property, the neighbor has sort of let their 40 acre property just kind of grow up. And so it actually benefits us very well that they have the bedding out there north of us. And then in the evenings, they come down here and they feed in our food plots and in our, our timber area. We have a lot of oak trees in here that they're dropping acorns for them to have for browse. So there's just a lot of benefit for them to be here now. From there, we began to put in food plots. We'd be were able to get the tractor in here to use the brush cutter to keep things mowed down, any sort of spraying that we needed to do to kill things off. And now, over the years, little by little, we've gotten it to where it's manageable. And now every single year, it's let's put a food plot in either in the timber. Let's put a food plot in in our strip here we call the walkway. Let's put a food plot in over here in the hay field area that, that is more of a bigger field type of food plot as opposed to a honey hole in the timber sort of food plot. And it's extremely satisfying to be able to know that you put in the sweat equity and the work to make a place that much better. To be able to say now, this is my best hunting spot. A place that I never hunted before that I had no desire to go to because I just wasn't gonna see the deer, now is my favorite and my best hunting spot. I was listening to a podcast not that long ago where they were talking about how much more satisfying it would be to go kill a really nice buck on public land as opposed to your private land that you've put your work in. And I cannot disagree with that more. And that's okay if, if people are different than me on that. I find way more satisfaction being able to take a deer off of a place that I have put the work into, 
that I've thought about all year on how to make better, that I've put food plots in, that I've spent time with my dad working on. It's way more gratifying and satisfying to be able to take a deer off of that piece of property to me than to go public land or to an outfitter or to somewhere that I didn't have any, I didn't do any of the fighting for. I've gone on about 20 hunts this year during this season. We're on January 14th right now. There's one day left in Missouri's deer season for this year. And I think that 15 of those 20 hunts have been here on this property. And I can't think of a single one that I didn't see deer. And that's extremely satisfying to reflect on and go, man, 10, 15 years ago, you wouldn't see a deer if you went hunting here. Now, year after year, myself and my dad are taking deer off of this place. And they're truly residents of this farm and this property. You can't have a trail camera up here without having deer on it at all hours of the day. They become so comfortable in here and having this as their home. And it's just very rewarding to have done the work, to have seen it come to fruition, to enjoy doing it as well. And then to see the fruits of that by just being able to see deer. It's not necessarily that you kill every single deer on it. Being able to see deer use what you've put the work into, it's extremely rewarding. So I would encourage you, if you do have access to property that you either own or you have permission to do any sort of work to, it's very satisfying to be able to get in there, get your hands dirty, get that work done. You can spend all year doing it. Any time of the year, there's something you can be doing. I think God put in our hearts that doing work and being able to see the fruits of your labor can be extremely satisfying and something that, that you can find a lot of joy in. And now year after year, I'm taking deer off of this place. My dad's taking deer off of this place. And it's so rewarding to know that you put the work in, you made it the best it could be. You continue, we continue to make it better year after year. And not only that, but you're able to harvest deer off of it and continue to make a habitat for deer for years to come. You don't have to eat the whole pie at one time. You don't have to read the the whole book in one sitting, but start small. Like I said, we started with five by five little patches and knocked stuff down with weed eaters and metal blades, a little bit at a time, make it a little better each year, and you're gonna see the results in the deer utilizing it more, the deer making it their home, and being able to harvest some more deer yourself. Thank you for watching Farming for Whitetails. I hope you guys had a great deer season, and we'll see you next time.